Hey guys, so today's video, I'm going to show you how you can power your house during a power outage with a generator and a very easy, simple step. Now, this isn't per se safe. I don't know about legality in any town or state or province that you guys are from, uh, but I'm going to show you the way that I do it, the precautions that I take and how I can power up my entire house using a generator. So outside there, I have a generator plugged in <clears throat> to a 30 amp RV cable coming through the window <clears throat> into my house, into my utility room. Now I have made what is called a suicide plug. So one end is going to plug into the extension cord of the generator, the other end is going to plug into my dryer outlet. Now dryers are two, 240 volts, my generator is 120. So what I did was I bought a dryer repair cord and there's a black, a white, a red and a green wire in here. It's black and red, white and green. Black and red are your hots. Your white is your neutral, your green is your ground. I took the black and the red, the two hots, tied them into this leg of the 30 amp, which is my hot, my white for my neutral, and my green for my ground. Now what I do, hey buddy, hey. wanna say hi to the YouTube people? Hi. <laughs> so what I then do is in a power outage, I come into my service panel here, and I make sure my main breaker is flipped off. And then I can always put a padlock through here so nobody can flip on the main breaker. This is demonstration purpose. I'm not gonna do that at the moment. I'm about the only one in this house that can actually reach the service panel anyways. I then flip off all of my other breakers. Hello again, buddy. I'm going to plug my suicide cord or my back feed cord. I don't know how YouTube feels about monetizing words with suicide in it. And this plugs into my dryer outlet. From there, excuse me buddy. No, come over here Hayden, over here. Thank you. This end is gonna plug in to the generator side. I might need two hands for this. Can I pull it? No, nope. there we go. So that's plugged in. Going out the window to the generator. We come back into the service room. Again, we're going to verify our main breaker is off. All of our service panels are off. I'm going to flip on my dryer breaker. First things first, in the winter time, first thing I want is my furnace. You'll hear it kick on and the generator kick up. So the generator just kicked on. Now I need to choose what main circuits I want in this house. So I'm going to turn on my fridge, I'm going to turn on the washer, which is also my deep freezer, I'm going to turn on my kitchen counter plugs, and this breaker, I'm going to turn on my basement plugs north my other refrigerator. I'm going to click on the utility room, bathroom lights, upstairs lights, etc. Turn on my basement lights. So the generator is loaded up. I'm not going to turn on my stove because that is a 240 volt circuit. I don't have 240 volts. If I need to cook, I mean I've got a couple of propane stoves and I've got a barbecue. I can also, if I want to, 
turn on my outside plug. My RV is plugged into that currently. No need for that. So essentially, everything in this house is now powered up. Start turning on lights throughout the house. Now, that is 30 amps, and I would need to be careful of what I'm all running. I mean, I know full well that I'm not gonna be able to run my microwave while I've got my furnace going. I mean, my lights here and there flicker. So it's all gonna be dependent on what I have to have running. Now, in a quick storm, power's gonna be out for five, six hours. All I'm worried about is honestly heating the house and keeping my food from spoiling. I don't need my deep freezer running. The deep freezer is going to stay cold and frozen for about a day and a half to two days at least. If necessary, I can always flip off my refrigerator, turn on my washer slash deep freezer socket for a few hours, and turn the fridge back on after. So that is how I go about back feeding my house. Now we're gonna take a step outside and take a look at the generator, which I have actually done a couple of review videos in the past. I'll link those in the descriptions. And if I can, I'll put some annotations somewhere up here. So now that said, when the power comes back on, and I'll know it comes back on via, I've got a street light sitting just outside my house actually. What I then do is I shut off every single breaker again. And I'm going to disconnect the cord from the generator. Now my main breaker is off and I've got the generator disconnected. I can then unplug it from the house. I can plug my dryer back in. I can grab a cold one. Coca-Cola, not beer. And then it's as simple as I come back into my main breaker. Now everything from the generator is disconnected from the house. I'm safe to turn the main back on. And then I'm gonna start turning circuits on one by one. Now my house is reconnected to the grid. So again, we'll step outside, we'll take a look at the quick generator. So this is at the generator I was using. It's a, a Blue Viper 3000i. It's an inverter generator, electric start. Uh, over here. 30 amp RV ready. A couple of 120 volt outlets there, 15 amp. Eco mode, 12 volt charging. There's the RV plug. And the RV extension cord I use. Plugs into the generator. That's what went through the window in the house. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Now, I do want to point out a couple of things quickly. Uh, when you are back feeding a generator to your house, you need to make sure that your main breaker is feeding the whole house is shut off. Now the reason behind that is if your main breaker is on, the power is out, there could be a linesman down the street, down the block, or several miles down the road holding that fallen power cord in his hand. Now I know power companies, utility companies take great precautions in making sure that they're not going to get any power coming into that line from any direction of where they've disabled it. They're going to shut off transfer switches upstream and downstream of that line. But that said, if they forget to do that, you turn on your generator, you plug it into your house, your main breaker's on. Now that might only be 120 volts, 240 volts that you're feeding your house with from your generator. But that 240 volts or 120 volts is being sent down the line to the step down transformer wrapping around and in through those coil windings, that voltage is going to spike up into the thousands of volts. So, I mean, if you guys have ever been shocked by an electrical outlet, I mean, it ain't fun. That's 120 volts. Being shocked by 
hundreds of thousands of volts is lethal. So you need to make sure that your main breaker is off and that there's not a possible way of that main breaker being switched on. Now my electrical panel, it has the option to put a little padlock on or a lockout lock. So when the switch is off, it cannot be turned on unless I remove that padlock. I would be the only person with the key. For this demonstration that I showed you, I did not do that. Again, I'm about the only one who can reach the electrical panels in this house. All of my kids are way too short to, to even reach it. My wife, she already knows not to touch it, no matter what. But there are those precautions you need to take. Now, if you can't put a uh, padlock or some sort of a lock on your main breaker, I would then suggest getting a lockout switch or a transfer switch. And that adds another breaker into your, into your panel system and allows you to shut your main breaker off and then flip on your, um, your transfer switch. And you cannot have either one of those on at, at the same time. So just, if you're gonna do this, take the precautions and be safe. You don't wanna end up killing yourself via why it's been nicknamed the suicide cord. I mean, you got two male ends on that. If that's live, it's gonna hurt. You also don't wanna end up killing a linesman. I mean, just, just be safe. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, I ask you to drop it a thumbs up, leave your comments down below in that little comment box. And uh, yeah, well guys, we'll see you in the next video. Take care.